Veteran New Zealand newsreader and journalist Arini Kapura made international headlines when she became the first person with a Māori face moko to read a primetime news bulletin. The respected bilingual broadcaster has dedicated much of her career to preserving, protecting and sharing Māori language and culture. I was thrilled to speak with Arini Kapura earlier from Auckland. Kia ora Dan, kia ora everyone. Marvellous to have you along. Tell me, did you expect the global reaction it's had? Not at all, Dan. Um, it's been quite a surreal last few weeks, actually. Christmas wasn't a quiet one with family, with my phone going off constantly, but it's been an incredible, um, actually, an incredible time. Um, it's been super exciting, and I'm really proud. And just, um, I want to say thank you to everyone who's sent um, messages of support, of encouragement, and just sharing their stories on how proud they are and how secure my being in a position like this my role um, but the sense of security they feel in being their own authentic selves so I'm talking about indigenous people and people of color just people um, all across the world have yeah have felt inspired and motivated to um, to look deeper into their own heritage and to yeah connect reconnect with who they are essentially I suspect part of the reason why it's had such cut through is because it resonates as you've just pointed out with so many people around the world here in Australia as well. For anyone who's not familiar, can you explain the muku? Uh, yeah, so moko kauai, uh, kauai is the Māori word for chin. So moko is how we, uh, moko is definitely not tattoo in the spiritual uh, spiritual sense. It uh, It's more than just ink on one skin. Um, the designs itself of any moko is actually etching um, histories um, and ancestral lines, which is what we call whakapapa. So it's my ancestors going all the way back to the great migration of Māori or Polynesian um, navigators to New Zealand and beyond that. And it's also the esoteric laws and all our customs and traditions that are, you know, etched into every line. So everything is intricately, um, you know, it's a process. It's a spiritual process as well as, you know, a three-hour um, wait on a table, uh, a big reveal. But yeah, what moko represents for women especially, it's not a coming of age, it's not a passage of a uh, right, but it's a birthright for Māori women, being who we are intrinsically in indigenous to Aotearoa. It represents more than just face value, what you see, but it represents ancestors, it represents history, it represents the trauma, it also represents the future and who we are and who we strive to be in order to to, uh, you know, pass on intergenerational knowledge to the next generation. So moko, in essence, is a representation, a manifestation of who we are as an Indigenous women. And for men, they have either the half mataora or the full mataora, which is the full facial markings. And, you know, that's a process unto itself. I don't want to, I'm not a male, so I can't explain that. But what I can say is that this is my language, this is my heritage, this is my ancestry, and this is my mother, my sisters, my daughters, yeah. So that's how I would explain what a moko kauai is. And given how powerfully it connects you to the past, to the stories, uh, to your very sense of being, how do you feel when you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror or where you see it? These days I feel very much honoured and empowered really and why I say that is because I don't just see myself um, in the reflection, I see um, my grandmother, I see my mother especially, um, she was there on the day that I received it three years ago, she just passed away in November, so I see her, I see my daughter, I see both my daughters and my sisters, I see I see other women, Māori women especially, who have undertaken, who have yeah, undertaken the role and the responsibility of being a mokoko wai wearer. Um, and there are hundreds of us, if not thousands. So I see Māori women in general. I see atua wahine, which is you know our deities and our uh, our traditions. I see the men as well as the women, um, and I see a lot of um, beauty. It's, it's not the aesthetic beauty, but it's the beauty of our history, our collective history, and just our presence um, in 2022. The fact that it's being 
publicised so widely and to be the face of moko and Māori tanga or the Māori people, my culture, it is a huge honour and a huge responsibility that I don't take lightly. Um, and it's also a representation of my language and that's what my purpose, I believe, is in life. You know, journalism, I've been in the role for, well, not in the role, but I've been a journalist for almost 20 years now. and. The whole reason I got into it was about the revitalization of Te Reo Māori. Um, so, you know, my purpose in life is to help continue that journey and to push and uh, inspire others um, to hear the Māori language being spoken uh, on TV, on radio, or wherever else in the public domain, but also to inspire and motivate Māori themselves to reclaim what's rightfully theirs. Mm. How important to you is that visibility of being seen, of being heard, telling stories and communicating across the nation in both languages? I think it's absolutely critical. You know, I remember being a young girl um, who loved only watching the Māori news, and at that time there was only three to four minutes of it um, in Māori um, here in New Zealand, and that was back in the 80s, and it was black and white. But what that did was that, that you know, as that girl watching the TV, watching uh, uh, Tini Molyneux, who was a newsreader at that time, speaking Māori fluently, a brown woman, you know, with not the your typical newsreader look, which was the bob, she was brown, she had an afro, and you know, she spoke beautiful Māori, she came from a tribe that I connect to, and that inspired me, that actually sat with me throughout my whole childhood. I wanted to be like Tinny Molyneux, so I understand, you know, me being in the role that I am now, the tides have changed, you know, I'm now the Tinny Molyneux, I suppose, of this generation, and I'm, you know, it's, just representation, seeing someone that looks like you, it means a lot to the next generation and to it, to ourselves. It, it motivates them or it enables them to realise that no matter what you look like or who you are or what you sound like, what language you speak, you're important and you belong in places and spaces like this. Uh, not only belonging but uh, certainly to dominate them and to be able to uh, bring that story so powerfully to everyone. Arini Kapura, thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome.